We seem to have uh, completely lost, and when I say we, I'm really referring here to the mainstream media, um, to the left, uh, lost our sense of irony or even of, of self-consciousness. Kind of funny because people on the left are always talking about their heightened consciousness, the fact that they are woke, that they are sort of now deeply aware of the uh, underlying meanings of what is happening around them. And yet when it comes to themselves, these people are myopic, they're obtuse, they have no sense of being able to look at something on the outside and then ask, am I also doing the same thing myself? Well, I'm thinking about all this because I'm reading a, a long, just kind of an in-depth article in the New York Times about the Chinese crackdown in Hong Kong. Now, there's a very serious crackdown going on in Hong Kong. Um, and it's terrible for the people of Hong Kong. It's remarkable that um, uh, China is sending this kind of a message to the world, certainly to Taiwan, which is not going to want to be the next Hong Kong. But you begin to see how this is a massive um, repression um, in our time. And it doesn't just extend to the people of China. It also extends to anyone who falls into the, you may say, the claws of the Chinese dragon. Now, here's the New York Times' article. Armed with the uh, sweeping national security law it imposed, they say that Beijing has now uh, turned Hong Kong into a place, quote, where dissent is immediately smothered. The very texture of the city's once vibrant daily life is under assault. Let's go into some of the details of what's uh, going on. They say, quote, children are taught to identify traitors. Neighbors are urged to report one another. Officials are pressed to pledge their loyalty. This is how the city's freedom was taken. This is just all just from the headlines. And then you begin to go into the details. Um, uh, the Chinese uh, government has suppressed a um, dissident newspaper called Apple Daily, and its leaders have been arrested. Why? Because according to China, this, they are, quote, a threat to, quote, Hong Kong's electoral system. In other words, Apple Daily is challenging the election system and, as a result, suppress the newspaper, treat them not just as dissidents, but as, as traitors. I don't know if, if anything is beginning to sound familiar so far. Uh, let's keep going. Um, the New York Times interviews a school teacher in Hong Kong who says that, you know, she's, uh, she used to like to teach multiple perspectives. Uh, but now she doesn't feel free to do that. Uh, there's pressure on her to just teach kind of a single point of view, the, the sort of official point of view. And so she does that. The Times also interviews a business owner who talks about the fact that he's living in fear. All businesses are living in fear. They're living in fear because ultimately the government is imposing its orthodoxy even across the private sector. There's a little tidbit here about how the national security law obliges financial service providers to inform the authorities about dissidents. Uh, think, for example, about what's going on in this country with the way the banks are submitting the names of people who are, uh, you know, um, taking money out to go to Washington, D.C. The airlines are turning information into the national security state. Oh, this guy was probably in Washington, D.C. around January 6th. Uh, quote, libraries have removed dozens of books. Um, and um, it goes on to say that um, the um, schools are now support, supposed to provide reports on what books they, they offer. Uh, schools are banned from playing a kind of patriotic Hong Kong anthem that's called Glory to Hong Kong. Why? Because you're going to, supposed to say glory to China. So the, uh, this is treated as a kind of rival base of loyalty. Um, and so as I read this, I think to myself, and it goes on, they talk about uh, the definition of subversion. And subversion here is any act that, quote, interferes, disrupts, or undermines the functioning of government. So think, for example, about all the charges against the January 6th protesters, that they are obstructing an official proceeding. Um, and uh, they're, they're subversives, that they are launching a coup. Um, and so just as the Chinese government, according to this article, can use the elastic language of subversion to go after political uh, dissidents, uh, we see that that is happening right in front of us here in our own country. But the point I wanted to make at the beginning was the New York Times doesn't see it. 
uh, they make no reference to any echoes or similarities. They don't say uh, that uh, this is, in a sense, chillingly reminiscent uh, of the world around us. Why? Because the New York Times is in the position in America um, of an ally of the same repression that they're complaining about in China. The New York Times, in other words, is working in concert with the deep state to do exactly the things that it is uh, complaining about in China. And think about the implications of that. I'll go into this in a little more depth in the next segment. Think about the implications for America's role in the world. For America, which America has habitually done to stand up and say, you're doing this and this, is, uh, this undermines democracy. You're doing this and that undercuts free speech. You're doing this and this subverts free elections. You're going after political dissidents. Well, you can't really say those things when you're doing them yourself. You really can't. And not only are you undermined in saying that, but the other guy knows that you're a hypocrite and a liar. So what I'm talking about here are the very broad, this is, goes beyond simply a recognition of irony. It has to do with more, what moral standing does the United States have anymore in telling bad actors around the world not to do things that are happening right here, right now, in our own country.